Hey gang, Dan here, marginallyclever.com. Thank you all for liking and sharing, subscribing, following along and commenting, all of that good stuff. I'm big about robots, you know that from my previous posts and I do a lot of 3D printing. Today I wanna to talk to you about the heart of most robots, the thing that makes life difficult for all the do-it-yourselfers, which is gearboxes, turning a weak motor that can turn pretty fast into a strong motor that turns a little bit slower. So this is a cycloidal gearbox that I'm gonna to put together and we'll give it a run. And while we go, I'm gonna talk about things in this first draft of this gearbox that worked and didn't work and what could be better. And maybe you can run with it from there. At the end, I'll have a link to the Thingiverse file and we'll put it in the comments below as well so that you can get these parts and try it for yourself. Maybe discuss it with your classmates in your robotics course. And, uh, and contribute new ideas. I, I wanna have a discussion going here. Let's figure this out. Cause as I said, gearboxes, they're the most expensive part. Uh, one of my friends in Seattle called it the long pole. It's the, it's the single most expensive part in the whole operation. Let's start by turning this power off. We can see already that this motor and this driver and this Roomba board work just fine. This is a 1.8 degree stepper motor. That means 200 steps per turn. This is a Roomba board. It has six stepper motors, which is perfect if you have a six axis robot arm. And under here, you can see these switches. When these switches are in the down position, that turns on all the micro stepping, which is 1 16th micro stepping, which would mean that instead of 1.8 degrees, it's 1.8 degrees divided by 16. So it's actually, if my math is right, 3,200 steps for one rotation instead of 200. Uh, also over here, you'll see there's a little jumper and then it says here, USB power and stand alone. Stand alone is when it gets power from here and USB power is when it gets it from here. This is not enough to drive your motors. So it has to be on stand alone. You could use any motor driver you like. Today I have used a Roomba. It's an old board. It, I can't actually reprogram it. So all it does is this business. Um, but it's enough for demo purposes. So now let's get to it. Um, this eccentric, let's get in close here. This eccentric, uh, the deviation is one and a half millimeters on each side because the teeth around the outside of the gear are three millimeter. And these screws that it drives around are three millimeter. The eccentric has a set screw over here. And that set screw is a three millimeter set screw that needs a, uh, I think this is a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And it is pressed onto a flat side that has been cut on the shaft of this motor so that there's no slippage between them. This little hole on the end is here so that if this is pushed all the way in, there isn't like an air pocket in the back. And there's a way to push a tool in there to help release this part when, it, uh, when you need to remove things. So, Moving on from there, this is the frame. I cut these holes in the outside to save on plastic, but it also is really convenient to look through here to see inside the gearbox. And I'm thinking now that uh, this edge should have had some side holes to look between the gears when it's assembled. One of the things about this, uh, this is prototype, right? So this edge should have actually been higher up and you'll see why later. Yeah, the print failed, but it was enough for me to get the job done. I want, yes, I want this gear first. And you might be wondering, what are these bearing balls about? Well, these bearing balls keep the gear from tipping because it wants to when the forces rise, the, like the, the pressure makes it want to go somewhere. And the easiest way is to sort of try to tip. With the balls in place, there's something preventing it from moving that way, which means more power where you need it to go. At least that's the theory. You can see I've run this gearbox once before and because of over tightening and the fact that the plastic isn't 100% filled in, it actually pressed in little divots on both sides. So probably better to print these 100% infill. Even then it might still make a dent. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see about that. Let's put this back here again. I put the wrong gear on. You see there's a dot on here? This dot lines up with the, with the wire on here. And this gear also has a dot, but they're not the same, right? It matters in a cycloidal gearbox. So. There's layer one. So then I put this little spacer on. Uh, if you have never heard of uh, Surclips or Eclipse, that's E-Clips, totally look them up because uh, this is a plastic version of a Surclip or a, a, an Eclip, uh, or sorry, a C-Clip, a C-Clip. 
because what this does is uh, you can push it in sideways and then it stops things from moving in the wrong axis. It, it's important to note, I think, that the gap between each of these eccentric bits is the same as the thickness of the bearing. It has to be in order to get the bearing over one and onto the next. So now I need my spare bearing balls. I'm making sure that I can see both dots because one dot is visible through the gap of the, the, the gear above it. Now, time for another clip. Excellent. And for la pièce de résistance. Let's take a look here. Can we see? Can we see through these holes? All the way down. Yeah, we gotta, we have to be able to see right through into the gap in the bottom there. That's good. So these four screws, ooh, depth of field, are gonna go right through all four. There's usually one that's tighter than the others. Now you'll notice that those screws had threads on them, as most screws do. And the screws are now pressing against the sides of the plastic. So over time, if this are running a lot, that those screws would eat the plastic and then the gearbox would get loose. Also, it's possible to tighten these screws too much. I probably see visually right now that the four screws are not tightened the same amount. It's because I'm sort of fudging how tight they should be. So a better version of this would have bushing, a, a brass tube that goes around the outside of each of these that would be factored in as part of the, the design. And then the brass tube would stop me from being able to over tighten but also protect the gears when they're in movement, in, in motion. So I think that's the right thick tightness. Let's try that out. That's looking pretty good. Now this output that we've shown you before, this has a spot in the back for a bearing and it matches this spot. The idea being that because this is centered on this, it prevents the shaft from bending. The two support each other. And because there's a bearing on the outside of this, that would then sit inside some kind of housing. All of it would be held perfectly centered, which again drives more power to your output. And there you have it. So this sounds kind of horrible because it's plastic on plastic, but it is working. Uh, and because there's not a lot of torque at 1 16th, I can stop that with my hand. A stronger, like a DC motor on here, or a motor running at full steps would probably be unstoppable. And, and what else can I tell you here? So because I can't reprogram this board, I can't re reduce, change the timing, which means I can't run it at full steps. It, uh, it's stepping so fast that at full steps, it, it fails to start. Basically what happens is you need a certain amount of time between steps for the motor to actually finish a step. So this would go in the output here and this doubles as a way to hold the bearing in place. It's a big bearing. Um, I guess the last thing I can tell you is that these holes are 50 millimeters in diameter and these are M6 screw holes. The reason for that is that it matches the pattern at the output of the hand of my robot because the idea is to get one gearbox that I can repeat three, maybe four or five times and then use that at every joint in the robot. So then I would want the hand pattern between every joint. Uh, lastly, uh, something I would love to do here is to have a way to send a wire right through here and to come out here. And then I can chain one motor onto the next and they can be completely separated from each other. The beauty of that is if I need to replace the fourth joint in my robot, I take the fourth joint out, I put the fourth joint back in, I connect the third and the fifth to the fourth, and away we go. I don't have to take the top three joints apart in order to get at the fourth and then reverse, right? So much easier for maintenance. Another advantage would be that if I can have all the gears boxes the same, the total number of unique parts comes way, way down, way, way down. And that's a, that's a good thing to have. The, the fewer parts, the less headache. The easier it is to make them all, to uh, purchase them, to store them. You get better pricing because you can buy them in bulk. It, it's a win in every possible way. Okay, I've talked myself out. I think that's all the important stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. Please share this with your friends who like robots, who like 3D printing, who like machinery. Uh, heck, share that with the people who don't like it. Maybe they'll discover a new thing that they're into. 
again, thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Dan. This has been MarginallyClever.com. This is a cycloidal gearbox, and I will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>